how to make a pull request. You know, in the two years I've been doing machine learning and data science, I haven't made a single pull request to an open source library. We're going to change that in this video. Alright, we on? Yep, we're on. Okay, so, as you saw there, there's a beautiful clip of me making my first pull request. So it is in motion, but we're gonna let that cook for a bit and uh, we'll check that in a second. I'm gonna break the, this video up into three parts. First will be what, so what is a pull request? Because if you're like me, it's one of those things you've heard of, but until recently it was a bit cryptic. Uh, then why, why, why should you make a pull request and then how and I'll use the one I made as an example of how you can make your own. So if you want to skip to the the how part, uh, there'll be a timestamp, future Dan, wherever you are mate, yeah, future Dan, if you can put a timestamp just where the, the how section is, so that way you can skip straight to that and you can make, figure out how you can make your own pull request. Let's start with what, what is a pull request? Now, I could explain it to you in words, but I'd prefer to do it with a little diagram. So let's do that. So let's say, oh, what's happening here? Let's, oh my goodness. Erase that, back to the pen. Let's say someone has their code over here. All right, and then there's heaps of code. And this is on GitHub, right? So there's, some, there's an open source repo on GitHub. And this is you over here and you're, you're smiling because you're using that, you're using that code, right? You're, you're doing something with that. But then what happens if you find maybe there's an error in here, all right? Or maybe on your version of it, because you've copied it over, you've got the original stuff, but you've, you've added something in. You've got your, you've got your little functionality that you're doing and it's, it's helping out with your project. And so maybe you're thinking, hmm, I could, maybe I could fix this error, or maybe I could add in this stuff into the original library, into the, so other people can use it, because I found it really helpful. All right, well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go, you're gonna grab your changes here, right? And you're gonna send them back to here. All right, and you're gonna go, yo, I made some changes. And the people who make this library, right, they're also really happy because they're seeing your changes. They're gonna check it. Now what this, this, this act of you saying, yo, I made some changes, and submitting the changes to the open source, open source repository. That is a pull request. Now you don't necessarily have to submit changes, right? You don't necessarily have to add functionality. You could fix, maybe there's something, as I said, maybe there's a few errors in the open source repository. Could be something as small as a, a spelling mistake in a comment or some code that, that isn't running optimally. You can, as I said, as, as you did at the start, Copy those copy that open source to your your code base with the errors. Maybe you've you've fixed the errors now, so now they're in green, and you've added some of your own functionality, and you send that back and you say, Yo, I made some changes. This is what your pull request is. Alright? So now we sort of know what a pull request is. All right, someone's got some code, you've decided that, that you can fix something in it or that you can add something to it and you say, hey, I'm gonna add these things to, to your code. And then someone who maintains the original code is gonna look at them and go, 
yeah, that's all right. I'm going to put them in there. And then it goes in there. And then now other people can use your changes or the errors that you found are now fixed. So why would you want to make one? So you probably gathered a little, little bit behind the why, right? Why, why you'd make a pull request. But we'll go, we'll go over it quickly right, before we get into how of it. So you've got the open source code and you've decided you've fixed some errors or you've added some functionality or something like that. Why is that valuable? Well, number one is because you're helping others, right? You're contributing back to the resource that you use to help you for your project. So now your code or your fixes can help others that choose to use the, the open source code for future projects. So helping out others, that's, that's the first big reason, right? That's the number one reason. And two, you've now got a story that you could tell someone, potentially a future employer, of what you've done, right? Now you're a contributor to open source. You can go, hey, look, this is what I did. I added some functionality to this open source library and now everyone else can use that functionality. All right, now we've got the what and the why behind a pull request. Let's, let's see how you would actually do one. We've got to go to the computer for this. So we need two ingredients to make our first pull request or to make a pull request. All right, ingredient number one is an open source library. I'm going to use Fast.ai as my example and a terminal. All right, so what do we do? Well, first things first, you're gonna to come to this open source library or whatever whatever you choose, in my case, fast AI. You're gonna click this little button, fork, and what's that do? Fork your own copy of fast AI slash fast AI to your account. Now, I'm not gonna click this on the video because I've already clicked it, I've already got a copy. I'm gonna show you. So, I'm gonna go into my repositories, your repositories, and now remember, I've clicked fork, right? You gotta click fork. So I've got fast AI. Oh, look at that handsome chap. My goodness. All right, well, I've, we've clicked fork and we've got forked from fast AI. Now this is in my repository, right? You'll see this in a second. Mr. D. Burke slash fast AI. Forked from fast AI slash fast AI. And now we're gonna copy, right? We're gonna clone our version of the fast AI repo onto our local machine. So we can do that by git clone and then see this address that we copied here? Clone here, we've just copied that. GitHub's done that for us. And now this says git clone, GitHub, that's my GitHub, Mr. D. Burke slash fastai.git. We hit enter. This is gonna take a little while, perfect time to do some stretching. Do a few bending exercises if you want. Because sitting, all, sitting down all day, you get a bit tight, especially around the hips. Now, we're going to speed this up, but if you're doing it on your own machine, you may have to wait a little while for, for, the, for this percentage to reach its maximum. All right, so the clone has finished, and don't worry if you're not following all, all these steps. I'll leave a, a little bit of a post down below so you can check out the exact commands. And we've got now, if we ls, which means list, we can see that we've got the fast AI folder. So we're gonna change into the fast AI folder. Beautiful. Now we're gonna ls again. All right, so now let's check out this. We got authors MD, authors MD. Right, so we've got all the files that are on here. We've now got them on our local computer. So first things first, what we're gonna do, we can see in our own repo that this has branch master, right? This. What we just cloned is branch master, but we don't want to change master just yet. Why? Because master is the ground truth of, of the open source library. That should always work. Now, what if the changes we wanted to suggest somehow broke master, right? There was an error in our change. We don't want to do that because that's going to cause a lot of problems for everyone. So first, we're going to create our own branch by using git checkout. Oh, check it, check it check it, check out slash B, and then we're gonna call, we're gonna give it a name, new branch. So in this case, we're going to be our pull request, right? Now, you might wanna name this something more conventional to to what your, your pull request pertains to, but just for the example, we're gonna call it our pull request. All right, there we go. 
so you can see down the bottom here, or maybe you can't because my face is in the way. Hold on. Oh, no, you still can. Switch to a new branch, our pull request. Now we'll clear all this because there's too much going on, so clear. But then if we do get status, it should tell us. On branch, our pull request. Beautiful, and that's the new branch that we just created. So we're going to now make our changes, right? So in our case, I want to change the file in fast.ai. I want to change this Python script, basic train.py. So how can we find that? Remember, we can just ls in there. We're going to change into fast.ai, right? And we're going to look for basic train. Basic train is there. And we're going to open up Vim, which is an editor. Vim basic train. Now you could do this in something like Visual Code Studio or Atom or something like that. But now what we've got is the same file, basic train.py, basic train.py. Beautiful, right? Now all the code's the same, just that this GitHub version is way prettier because it's got colors and all that sort of stuff. But Vim, we can still get the job done, right? Maybe we want to just add, add one little thing, right? Maybe we go, hmm, something simple. Right, where's the bottom of the learner class? Here, here will do. There's a little gap there. I'm going to press I in Vim to make an edit. I'm going to tap over here and we're going to go we'll make it. We'll just put in a comment. Our super awesome pull. Actually, super awesome sounds lame. Our pull request. There we go. Nice and simple. All right. That's it. That's all we're going to do. Now, of course, you might not be doing something as basic as this. You might be fixing an error. You might be writing some new code, some new functionality. And I'll show you my example of where I did that in a second. But um, now we're going to save it. So in Vim, you do uh, escape and then colon WQ. You know how to exit Vim is one of the most upvoted stack overflow questions of all time. But in case you're in Vim, you press escape then colon, right, escape, colon, WQ, because that means write and quit. So write the changes that we just made and quit. Boom. So now we've changed basic train.py, right? So what, where have we added it in? We've added in, oh, it's not even on here. Oh, I wonder why that is. Well, because remember, we've only changed this locally. We haven't pushed them up to GitHub yet. Our change, our pull request should should appear somewhere in here. Now that's what we're going to do. So we're going to add our changes. So git add basic train.py, right? So git add means add that file that we just changed. And then we're going to go git commit, commit our changes. And we're going to go added a comment about our pull request, right? Because git, git commit means commit the changes, and this little m tag means message, and this is our message, right? So added a comment about our pull request. Boom, there we go. Now, what do we wanna do? So we wanna push these changes back to our GitHub. How do we do that? So we're gonna go git, push, origin, and now we need our new branch name, our pull request. So what this is going to do is push push our changes back to the origin, which is this, our repo over here, right? But it's gonna push it to this branch, right? Now this branch doesn't actually exist yet, right? If we search in here, our pull, it's not there. Let's see what happens when we do this. There we go. Our pull request to our pull request. And we got a few changes. There you go, total four, delta three, reused, resolving deltas. All right. Now, what if we, maybe we refresh this. See if our branch is here. Let's have a look. There we go. Our pull request. All right. Now, you know the change that we just made. We don't have to, we don't have to scroll through that and find that. Why? Because if we go back to the fast AI master there we go mr d burke our pull request this little magic green button appears beautiful so why don't why don't we see what happens compare and pull request 
So what have we just done? We've pushed our pull request to our version of the FastAI library, the forked version. Then we've gone back to the FastAI original version. And now it shows it here. So it's like, okay, so the base repository is the FastAI, FastAI on master. And the head repository, so our version of it, is Mr. Deberg slash FastAI. And it's comparing our pull requests that we just made. Right, so it's able to merge. And now, why don't we, where can we see these changes? Oh, wow. We can, oh, there we go, boom. Little green addition. Our pull request, nice and simple. Remember, if we go back into Vim, basictrain.py, find it somewhere, we made it, we made it somewhere in there. We're not gonna pretend we're gonna search for that in Vim. But this is where I could click on here pull request. It's important to read this because some repos have different different styles of doing things. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend that we we filled out this. I made a change to add a comment about my pull request. All right, and then if I wanted to make it, I'd click create pull request, but I'm not gonna do that because this one, we they really don't want that in master, right? But I've pre-made another pull request, right? Just for this video. Here's something I cooked up earlier. And this one's actually in the process of being done. So we got add predict with Monte Carlo dropout. I'll put some resources below so you can you can actually check this one out, right? I can just copy the link. So I'll copy the I'll put that in the description for the YouTube. So uh, in the description for this video, so you can check out what it is. Now I've put in here. I've added some functionality to add Monte Carlo dropout at prediction time. You don't have to worry about that for now. And then I've given some examples. I've given some references. And then what you'll do is Sir Pugger. I mean, no, for some reason I think that says Sir Pugger. I think that's a Runescaper. Someone who's a collaborator from the original library will check out your pull request and go, yep, this is good in this case. Thanks for your PR. I've adjusted, I've just restyled some statements that fit on one line. Yep. So he's essentially saying, I've, I've checked out your code that you've, you've added in your pull request and I think it looks good. I've fixed it up to make sure it's in line with the fast AI style of things. And then he's like, yeah, let me know if anything else feels off. And I said, thanks for the restyle, all looks great to me. So the next step will be that my code changes will be merged from here, Mr. D. Burke, add Monte Carlo dropout into fast AI master. And that is how you make a pull request. Now, if you wanna see exactly what I did and why I did it, I'll leave links below to the forum post and the actual pull request so you can check it out. But the purpose of this video was why a pull request, what is a pull request, and how to make one. So, there we go. All the best making your future pull requests, and uh, keep learning as always. I said as always far too many times. I'm a bit rusty, a bit rusty on these videos. That's all right, we'll see you next time. I'm gonna go back to, uh, to working out how certain my model is about predictions. What are you on? Testing, testing, testing. How does this work? We missed a step. Mm -hmm.